my mind until they close the curtains. Look deep inside before you judge the surface. Look in my eyes and read between the lines. My soul is searching. Chosen, gotta focus. They know this time you keep on and holding action. No bragging, no boasting. Back with no cap, they hold it down. I'ma speak my mind until they close the curtains. Look deep inside before you judge the surface. Look in my eyes and read between the lines. My soul is searching. Chosen, gotta focus. They know this time you keep on it. Holy action, no bragging, no boasting. Facts with no cap, they hold it down. Envision me words and use them as power. The enemy lurking. I'm calling my spirit, and if it can hear me, it's spoken with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys i know we a little late today but y'all just don't know stuff happens but we know y'all love us out there y'all gonna forgive us and excuse us we having some mishaps but that's okay y'all favorite podcasters are here y'all know that spoken with purpose i am your girl host Tanya and I am your girl host Kiana <laughs> and we have a very special guest with us here today and I'm gonna let her introduce herself and I am their guest <laughs> Shamika McNair absolutely she's Welcome. an author too we gonna give a little shout out towards the end yes. so y'all can get a little familiar with her and make sure that you guys follow her but we got a hot topic today Kiana you want to tell them what it's all about yes our topic for tonight is purposely Single-minded, purposely single-minded, um, single, married, and divorced is the uh, subtitle, and this is episode 23, y'all. Absolutely, and y'all know we always try to have some type of purpose when it comes to the topics that we choose, and um, this one kind of came from uh, Shamika, at least the idea came from Shamika, but it's a conversation that's needed, so when you think of single-minded, I kind of got it with the dots in between the single and the mind because um, you're purposely single, and then I want you guys to just keep the single-minded um, as a portion to this podcast as well, and we'll show you guys how that ties in, but um, I'm gonna let Shamika kind of make the point, so that way she can kind of give you guys a better, I think she can describe it better than me, so she can kind of give a little rundown. <laughs> About single-mindedness and taking advantage, taking full advantage of your singleness, and the reason why I think that's so important is because when we try to add someone to our life and we have not um, completed our single assignment and done all the things that we wanted to do, mm -hmm. but we decided to wait to have somebody in our life and do those things with them, mm -hmm. when it was assigned for your singleness. Right. Because your marriage, your partner, y'all have so much more stuff to do, but y'all get caught up right. trying to do single stuff while you're married. Absolutely. I think that's, that's such a great point. Yeah. <laughs> An absolute great point because um, I'm, I'm married, <laughs> as we talked about on the show. So when she mentioned it, um, because she has an event that's coming up, and she was talking about the event was going to be dealing with uh, certain things concerning this topic. And I was like, dang, that's crazy because it's a lot of things. Because I got married young, mm -hmm. and I was also in that relationship for a while before I even got married. So I'm like, I am tackling a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I should have tackled while I was single. So I'm handling some of my single stuff mm -hmm. now that I'm married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of that single stuff can be like the career. You, you would think that you would have all of those things together prior mm -hmm. to you getting married. So, you know, I had to go to school and try to get a career while yet I'm married. Excuse me, of course, we already have some kids. <laughs> so, you know, you're thinking about all the things that you do kind of have to tackle um, after you get married. So um, I thought it was um, an excellent way to kind of, uh, what excellent things to talk about. Absolutely. I agree. Um, and I was just going to say, um, what does, you know, being single really means to you? Like, what does single really mean to you? Because a lot of times people would say, you know, they're single, but they're married. But they're separated, mm -hmm. you know. Um, is that considered being single or you're just separated or... There's also, for example, you're um, in a relationship with someone, but you're not married to them. Mm -hmm. Are you still single? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or do single, single mean okay. you alone? Yeah, do single mean you're alone? Like, what does single mean to you? What does it really I, mean to you? you? I think 
single, let's say for instance, you're separated, I feel like you're you're not single mm-hmm. because you still have that connection. You still have whether that person is still physically there with you or not, mm-hmm. you still have that connection, that bond and that tie to them. Mm-hmm. Until that tie is gone, it's mm-hmm. like you're physically you're by yourself, but spiritually that attachment is still there and you can't officially mm-hmm. say that you are single until that tie is severed. Yeah, are you referring to married? Is that the- married people who are separated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point because I think that you can still, you know, <laughs> prepare yourself for the singleness, but at the same time, it's like there's there have to be certain boundaries there because you are not single. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. As far as what was the other <laughs> you asked about the um, in the relationship, in the relationship, what was yeah, that? That, that, if you're you're dating someone, you're, you're single. single. You're not married. You're, you're not married. That's single. You are still single. However, there could be boundaries um, that you and the person that you are dating can set of what we're doing, um, what we're not doing while we're in this courtship. But as far as you're still single until you have mar- um, a ring, ring you're set I do. That's what I was And you have to, yeah. those papers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you consider a person to be single if they're not married? I consider them to be single. Yeah. Okay. So you get, because I don't know the end what to say. I definitely agree with you when it comes to the married thing. Um, as far as to when you're in a relationship, I think it's more, for me, I would be more like you're, I guess you're still available. <laughs> you know, I, well, I don't know. I guess if, cause let's just say, cause sometimes we waste, we're like, we yeah. waste a lot of time in a relationship that you know may not be going, um, in the direction that you want to go, but you done got so attached mm-hmm. or got in the routine of being with this person to, you know what I'm saying? You kind of. Um, you you just stay there, but yet you know you still want to date, or maybe mm-hmm. it's been made known in that relationship that they're not going to make um, this into a, a marriage. I guess right. you would say. Mm-hmm. Then I think that at some point you gotta allow people to be available for you to, mm-hmm. for me to go out and go get exactly what it is that I want. And maybe y'all mm-hmm. might make an agreement to do whatever it is that y'all want to do in the meantime. But at the end of the day, I think you're available. Yeah, mm-hmm. single. Yeah, but as far as being the availability, I think. People leave it so broad right now to where that's how people get end up in situationships. Yeah. By leaving it so broad. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am unmarried, but I am not available because I am seeing someone. I am I am dating someone. Yeah. So I think when people bring that clarity, we can pretty much identify. But as far as legally wise, single. Legally. Legally is yeah. Yeah. I I totally agree. What was your opinion about your question? Yeah, I I don't know if I I don't know if I really agree with the whole <laughs> being single um i mean the legalities of it i, I right. certainly agree right. spiritually i certainly agree but i mean when you're in a relationship with somebody you can't really you know go around and say i'm single you know like correct i don't i don't say i'm single. i don't be like oh well i'm single. i say i'm unmarried but i am seeing someone that's how oh, I, that's how you that's, that's how, how you how, mm-hmm. i'm an unmarried person and i'm seeing someone so I don't say okay, well I'm single because me stating that even though, Lee, yeah, the you know, legal <laughs> I'm yeah. single. However, right. you know I'm not available to date you or get to know you. Okay. Well, that's pretty. pretty I, I mean, I wouldn't probably go about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely different. Um, yeah, definitely think about it. I sure don't say that. <laughs> Hello, hey y'all, hey viewers. viewers. Hey. Make sure you guys comment. You know we include your comments, so make sure you drop those in there so Tosh can uh, incorporate them within the show. Um, it was something else that I had wanted to bring. I just uh, left my mind while you were saying it. It had nothing to do with what was on my paper. Um, oh, okay, like as far as to you being single, like I realized that when we are single, because I've been married, but at some point, you know, I was married, I was separated, I guess I won't necessarily say I was single, but I definitely was living single mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that way. And um, I realized that when you're single and you have a desire to be in the relationship, mm-hmm. your focus is more on becoming a better mate Correct. for that person whom you're, you know, you're desiring for. And I'm like, I think that's crazy because now you, 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 can't, you can't focus on the single assignment as though you said uh-huh. So I was like, I thought that that was a pretty good point when you made it. I was like, hey, because that's, that's crazy. People be wanting these white, because now that you're in a relationship where you're a married Correct. woman, you know what I'm saying, you realize that people who have that desire might like, take advantage of that moment. 
that you have in your singleness. And when you get there, because trust me, by the time you get over here, it's a whole different set of issues that you're going to be dealing with. So, uh, so what is, tackle the single so, thing. So what are some of these single things that you keep referring to? That you as can, far, that you, you're I apologize. To. Tosh, you had a comment? Mm-hmm. Hi, Carl. <laughs> hey, Carl. <laughs> Carl says, I am divorced, and we li- we still live together. What do you call that? Single. <laughs> well, as, as far as you say, oh, legally. Carl, <laughs> oh, you see my face? <laughs> what are y'all doing? <laughs> I really what y'all doing. What y'all got going on? Thank y'all got going on. Look, so I, Carl. Y'all going to I'm going to touch on that, too. I, I just, I think it's, if, you, if we're going by what Shamika said, I mean, technically, you, I mean, you legally not, single. If, and if they're not in no relationship, they're just living together, what is it for, you know, the benefit of the kids? If they're not, you know, having any type of ties together, then I would consider it single as well. You know, yeah. there's no uh, le- legal binding, you know, no relationship status, no nothing, then you're single. Y'all still act like a married couple. Right. Y'all still in there acting like America. Why y'all still staying together if y'all divorced? Like, what? Huh, what's going on with that car? Tap on that screen. Like, we want to know a little more about that. That's got crazy. <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime. Okay. <laughs> what is something? <laughs> okay, go ahead. What? Okay. Tanitria Blake. Hey. Hey, hey bud. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> I think loyalty makes you not single. Since being divorced after 15 years of marriage, I view things much differently. Okay, she said, is she single? I think loyalty makes you not single. Since being divorced after 15 years of marriage, I view things so much differently. I've learned a ring of peace. I've learned a ring or a piece of paper means nothing. Mm -hmm. You have to have that commitment to be in a relationship, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It, it makes sense. Uh, but if, if y'all ain't got the commitment, then what, 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 are you, what are you married for? Is what I would, is what I would ask you. Because obviously, if you're saying that you need to have commitment to be in that type of relationship, clearly we all think that, well, at least I think that you're supposed to have commitment when you're in the marriage so if that's something that you desire like i don't understand why why would the marriage remain because you know you're like you got a commitment <laughs> to me hey keisha My keisha is replying to carl she said that's complicated yeah complicated. <laughs> that's, that's carl also commented that was funny mm-hmm. um there is a delon taylor yeah says um shamika has some very nice lips <laughs> Why did you interrupt me? Oh, that must be one of your friends. He's a, yeah, one of my Facebook friends. <laughs> Tell him, ask questions. Get involved in the conversation. Stop looking at people's lips. Delon, just say it. Kenna, what was you trying to? Uh, I was <laughs> asking, what is some of these um, single things? Single things that you are referring to when you say that we need to take care of prior to becoming married. What are some of those things? I start. I think that you first need to get to know yourself because I don't think that, hell, to be honest with you, I just learned that. I just found out some things that I didn't know about myself mm-hmm. just recently. <laughs> so I think you need to take time to uh, definitely learn yourself. Excuse me. And if you have a desire um, to be in a relationship or to be married, then I think that you need to um, find it not yourself. You'll know what the heck you, well, at least what you think you can deal with and what you think you can't deal with because you won't know that until you get into that experience. But I think that you need to begin to learn yourself. If you want a career, I think you should start establishing those type of things. If you have a spiritual relationship with the Lord, I think you need to tend to that. That way more your focus won't be trying to prepare yourself to be a wife because we already said um, I think the, they said that a man is going to, like the man will find you in other words. So in your single stage, everything that the Lord is doing to make you whole and make you satisfied and happy with whom you are, then that man who is looking for you, he'll find you and he'll like that, which is about you versus you trying to make yourself into someone who think is um, a, a, a good catch. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to focus on you and everything about you in your singleness. At least that's my take. 
Yeah, I, I can I can definitely understand that. Um, from a single perspective, because I've never been married. Um, I, I and I, I don't think I even wanted to get married um, up until I was maybe 29. Then I kind of just started having that desire. But mm-hmm. growing up, I never um, even considered being married or anything. You know, I didn't. I wasn't that typical girl that was like, ooh, I want to be married. I want to have, you know, kids. I want to mm-hmm. have this um, house with this picket white fence. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't have those type of dreams or those desires. But when I turned, like, like I said, 29, I then started to have those desires. And I was, you know, at some point, you know, I used to have a conversation with, that's Tanya, she's mm-hmm. my best friend. So I used mm-hmm. to have a conversation with her um, in reference to being single and, you know, now I want to get married, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was feeling some kind of way because I used to hear people be like, oh, um, if you're not this type of woman and you're not this type of person, you know, then um, you're not going to, that you're not going to actually have that individual that you're looking for. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. give us an example, what you mean, not marriage material or what you just talking about certain things that you do may not work well with. Yeah, marriage clientele. material. Okay. In other words, marriage marriage material. So if you don't cook, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, then you're not marriage material. You're not, you know, uh, somebody that. Or yeah. My mind just went completely (laughs) blank. I kid you not, my mind just went completely blank. Oh my god. Yeah, but marriage material. Yeah. So in the event that you know, um, when I was actually looking, and we're not looking, but when I was actually hoping for a husband. You know what I'm saying? I was hoping that I would find somebody, and I started to get sad because of the things that were being said. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I started to feel some kind of way about it. So I had the conversation with, you know, Tanya, and I think it was because of society. Correct. Yeah. You know, society yeah. has yeah. society has put like this time frame mm-hmm. on you, mm-hmm. a time frame in which you have to have or be married by. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, there's no time frame. I had to realize, and the Lord had to tell me that, you know. Um, it's all in my timing, correct? Not in your timing, you know. Right. Um, so then I started. I stopped thinking that way. I stopped mm-hmm. thinking about you know wanting to be married, wanting to force myself into getting married. Mm-hmm. You know, I left all of that alone because I realized that it ain't about when I want to. It's correct. about when he wants to. When he's pre- prepared me and made mm-hmm. me whole for the husband that you know is out mm-hmm. there for me. So I said all of that to say that at the end of the day, it's not about your biological clock ticking. Correct. Yeah. A lot of people is worried about that time frame. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm too late in the game to get married. Oh, don't nobody want me um, because, you know, I don't cook. I don't do these certain things that, you know, society say a wife should do, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, that's my okay. take on it. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, some good points that you made, and I do think that people... <laughs> Definitely, once they see a woman at a certain age and they married, then they go looking at you like, what the hell wrong with you? Yeah. Like, there must be something wrong with you that you're not married. And I do think that that's a little, I think it's very unfair, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, because I, 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 I tend to ask some of the fellows that question, not necessarily the women, because I think the women is more or less, we just, you know, we catching the bulk of that. But I ask some men that, and um, I don't. I think it might be just in our dog on mind. I think it may be us women who might be doing it to each other more agree than the that. men. No, I really do think it's men too because I actually I said see more, more of the women. More not, of the, not that the men ain't doing women. it at all. Yeah, because well I see a lot of men doing it too. I don't I mean I don't I don't see one more than the other. Because I see a lot of men saying the same thing, like uh, you know, if she's pretty and she ain't married yet, then what's wrong with her? Wrong with her. Yeah. Men say that too. <laughs> Yeah, like something wrong with you if you ain't if you ain't married yet and you pretty. So and I see I see that you know yeah. thrown around a lot even on Facebook on social media. Yeah. You know you see the memes and you know mm-hmm. the little jokes and the shade thrown and all kind of stuff with regards to that. And it's like no, bro, ain't nothing wrong with nobody. Right. You know. And then a lot of times, like I put in the caption, you know, people ain't got to be because they're single that they're lonely. Correct. Just because you're single doesn't mean you're lonely, and just because you're married doesn't mean you're fulfilled. I saw that, yes. I put that in the caption purposefully because I I know people who are married mm-hmm. and not fulfilled. What do you mean fulfilled? The meaning that they don't have that happiness in their household. They're not fulfilled as far as, you know, what society or what people say marriages are. Like, they're supposed to be this happy, wholesome 
life in a marriage. Like you're supposed to be whole with another individual. I think that those are some of the things that needs to be ta- tackled while you're single, because you can't f- you can't find me being a married woman. You cannot find fulfillment in a man, and vice versa. Me being a spiritual woman and having a relationship with the Lord, my fulfillment comes there. When I go to thinking about the things from a natural perspective and us living in this very real world, so we're dealing with real life issues, you know, I have to um, I have to buckle down like on my mind. I have to get back to what it is that the Lord told me because I may have happy moments with individuals, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, my joy doesn't come from a man. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, those are some those are some of the things towards the single mindedness is what I was telling you guys because I also realized that when we're in the marriage, what we do is we 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 tend to focus more on trying to please and make that make that we're married to happy, or even trying to keep up with this the concept of what they think that marriage yeah. should be. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Versus focusing on the mind, the single mind that the Lord had you. Well, you know were saying you were spiritually grounded, you know what I'm saying? You was more or less more mm-hmm. concerned about your actions and not trying to impose your stuff onto other people or try to make them into what it is that you want to be. When you're in that marriage, I think that you tend to lose yourself. So I think that we need to be single-minded at the end of the day because I can't control my husband. I can't control how you talk to me. I mean, I could voice my opinion, but I can't control any of your actions. So in order for me to remain married and not hurt, and not, you know what I'm saying, like vindictive or even want to do things to you that you do unto me. I think we always have to stay single-minded. I mean, at one point, I used to be, Lord, you got to fix this joke. <laughs> like, you know, I'm about tired of it. Like, you got to do certain things. You got to fix him. You're referring to, and I don't mean to cut you off, but single-minded, you're referring to just focusing on your individual exactly. self. Exactly. You have the accountability. You. The exactly. accountability of your own self. Absolutely. And that's some of the stuff that you're referring to that we must tackle prior to getting into the marriage yeah. is the accountability of your own self. I think that you can take advantage of that. Some people don't have that option. Like I said, I got married early, so unfortunately I got to tackle some of those things now yeah, that I'm right. married. You know what I'm saying? And, and with my strong connection that I have with the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And I have my own convictions. So you know what I'm saying? I have to make sure that I stick to to that mm-hmm. and not start imposing them. You get mad when people don't treat you like you feel like you need to be treated. You know what I'm saying? Those change people's actions. Sure. So you have to stick to that, you know what I'm saying, in order to remain whole because what if you're divorced? Mm-hmm. What if you become divorced? You lose yourself in those marriages. Right. Absolutely. So and I wanted to ask both of you um, a question, uh, being that you both have been married or you're still married, Tanya, and she's mm-hmm. been married. Um, do you think that... Uh, we have let, you know, society, family, friends, etc., cetera, um, our beliefs force us to get married prematurely. <laughs> of course, let you guys, start, not us, but you guys. Force us to get married prematurely, yes. I think that ties into a lot of <clears throat> what you were just saying um, about the, you know, the time clock and kind of this whole idea and concept of what we were taught to look forward to a lot of people feel that um, marriage is a big deal like yeah. out of success above sometimes houses cars um education it's marriage mm-hmm. so even if they have because this is how important it is because even if they have car mm-hmm. house education four degrees at the end of the day still don't feel fulfilled until they have a mate they still mm-hmm. feel like they're unsuccessful or that yeah. they're not where they're supposed to be in life because they don't have that yeah. companion. They don't have that person in their life. So I believe that it has become, mm-hmm. um, it's definitely something that we have, that people have made others feel like if you don't have this, then somehow you failed in life. Yeah. Somewhere and you've done that's something exactly wrong. exactly why I started mm-hmm. to feel the way. Mm-hmm. Even with me, you know, not never feeling the way that I felt until I hit 29, never feeling that way. I think it was simply because I allowed society and people mm-hmm. to get, you know what I'm saying, right. in my head, in my ear about the marriage, right. and you don't, you, I, I felt like I wasn't accomplished mm-hmm. unless, you know, I, I had a husband. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree yeah. with that. I think you made an excellent, I think you, I mean, I couldn't have said it better. I think that um, you, you said it great, but as far as to me, I don't think I had to. <laughs> no, I got, I got I married really time. early as well. I got married at 18. Yeah. Hell, you got married before me, yeah. 
So like you said, you don't have, some of that stuff you don't have time time to mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Some people are just young and they just rush, you know, get married mm-hmm. and then they learn along the way. I yeah. learned along the way. Yeah. How long were you married? Um, oh, my marriage is very short lived. <laughs> but I was married for a long time though, but we separated immediately. Um af- um after the marriage kinda I'm ex military, so as soon as I got married and I can't tell all over the social media. <laughs> but as soon as I got married I deployed um overseas mm-hmm. months later. Yeah. So we we had to separate like real early and we never really came back together. So all those years I spent separated. Wow. Wow. Um from him until we went back and forth with trying to get the divorce. Well mm-hmm. he wouldn't give me the divorce. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's another that's another layer. I can't dig <laughs> into that. Okay, okay. <laughs> that thing gonna fold all over. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But for real. So, um, but yeah. So, like you said, sometimes people don't have that um opportunity, and I believe those are people Mm who um single assignment is tied into that marriage. Yeah. So it's not like oh well, you got to do all this before you get married. If you if you get married before that, then you did it wrong. No. Some people have a single assignment. Yeah. Some people single assignment is tied into them into that marriage. There's some things there's supposed to do together with their mate and then yeah. there's some things some people who's supposed to do things before they get a mate yeah 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 I've, I I've got that. stuff to do before I <laughs> got obviously yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying like yeah you obviously didn't <coughs> had no time because I don't think I even had time enough even desire to want to be married to be honest I don't think I like I didn't have that I don't, I don't think as a kid I've ever had a dream of oh that that grand wedding like that child was never in my dog on mine yeah. like you realize that you're in a relationship and then I had got in the church so you know you I immediately went to think about Shaq and I'm like we ain't about to do this <laughs> you know I, I wasn't trying to be like you got to marry me or you got to do goes this back to me saying do you think that it was the, prematurely due to the beliefs I said beliefs family. You know, yeah. friends, uh, society. You know. Yeah, it was. It was definitely more or less on the uh, belief side, but I wasn't. It wasn't a forced thing. You know, I just realized that that's something that I didn't want to do anymore with my spiritual walk. And the decision came about through that that we were going to get married. All I knew is that I wasn't going to be living in no God dog for All I know is we need about to be having sex. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and I ain't married. You know, right. I was more or less focused from that aspect, not like you got to marry. I think some people put that pressure on people because it may be something that they want to do personally, but there was no pressure that came from me. It wasn't necessarily uh, thinking that I was ready to be married, but when we talked about it, it wasn't that I wasn't unwilling to be married. I definitely didn't know nothing about marriage. <laughs> so I kind of learned that um, on the go as well. But you know, we ta- we said it was single minded and the single married and divorce. Excuse me. So let's talk about some of the things that happen after you get divorced, like being single. I ain't divorced. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna be just a bit transparent because somebody may have some transparent situation. <coughs> Okay, so I said my marriage, I was separated for a very long time. I'm going to be real. I was separated, and um, I considered myself single, Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. though I was still married. Mm -hmm. Because him him and I were separated for so long um, that I just considered myself, I was so single in my mind that um, I I was living with someone or whatever, um, engaged and married, and we've been together four or five years Mm -hmm. in my marriage. Okay, and still, I, I mean, I wasn't cheating, but, <laughs> you know, I just had a lot of stuff going on while I was still married. So, um, I think once I got saved, that's when I had to go, because when you're in the world, you can do things however you want to do. There's no boundaries. There's no singleness. Yeah. There's no, like the lady was saying, there, uh, the paper the ring don't, don't really matter. So... It was, what I had to do was go back to the root of everything. Okay, first, let's go ahead and clear all this up. Go ahead and let mm-hmm. go of your little situations you got going on mm-hmm. over here. Go ahead and let go of this um, mm-hmm. shacking situation you have right here. I know y'all been together for a long time, right. but you need to go ahead and clean this up. You can't be living together. Let's go ahead and get yeah. rid of that. You need to get a divorce. If you expect God to send you a husband, because mm-hmm. I was saved now, and I'm like, okay, now I want a godly man. Yeah. I want God to send me. Yeah. <laughs> you got too many layers going on here. How you how you over here trying to do this over here? You live with somebody. Yeah. Call yourself want to get married to this person, and you already married. Mm-hmm. 
It's too much. Yeah. That's where the boundaries come in. So I had to go in and undo all those layers, cut the situation. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to, we moving out. You got to move out. I'm going to go ahead and move out because I don't want to be here with all this fornication we would have had up in here. So (laughs) we both moving out separate places so it won't be no confusion. And then let's get a, let me get a divorce. And I took off work one day and I went and filed for my divorce in, um, in Orlando. And that's when, um, I began to get back well I didn't immediately go back into the dating scene yeah I took that time off to so-called work on myself yeah. Yeah. and not date and I want because there was something you said I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up in a minute yeah. <laughs> and call I'm um, not wanting to date right away because I wanted to wait and when I meet my husband we yeah. just gonna hit it right off yeah. this is what I learned because I refrained from dating for a long time and I did celibacy for a very long time Eight years straight. Don't ask me about the other years <laughs> because I was practicing celibacy. Great. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Come to my being. We'll talk about it. <laughs> but eight years straight celibacy, you know, um, and I'm thinking these are all the things that you do to prepare for marriage. These are the things you do. You want God to bless you with a, a mate. And um, I want, this is mm-hmm. what I wanted to address that a lot of times women feel like just because they're waiting a long time that things are being healed. Mm. Things are being fixed. You're growing and you're... No. The moment... Because I thought all this time I had alone, I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. But yeah. the moment... Let me tell you, you're going to need courtship. Mm-hmm. Because in courtship, wherever you left off at, whether it was in the world, in church, you're going to pick right back yeah. up when you enter a relationship. Yeah. So if there was some baggage that you, you didn't deal with, you're going to deal with that in the relationship. Oh, my goodness. So you can wait. Point. You can wait five years, 10 yeah. years, 20 years, yeah. whenever you decide yeah. to court. Guess what? Whatever you buried at eighteen mm-hmm. gonna come out the bag. So that's the thing that I have yeah, that I wanted to address. You can stay single yeah. forever. I think it's a very good point because it was a it was something that I encountered where um like say for instance in your singleness or your mm-hmm. your celibacy where you said you're not dealing with certain things. Mm-hmm. You know, you may have gotten out of a situation and now you're here in your single assignment that you would say and then now you find yourself in a in another relationship or whatever marriage, and you realize that you because you were tackling certain things that you were made aware of, it wasn't an issue to you. Now when you get in that next uh, relationship, you realize that God dang, I got some junk going on, but you didn't realize that you had that issue mm-hmm. until you got into another relationship and then what people like to do is they like to get back at that relationship and then they want to tackle it it may just be something that you have to tackle like you just said certain things that Mm -hmm. you see you have to you might have your single assignment while yet you're in your marriage so Mm -hmm. it's certain things that you just may have to tackle in a relationship you can't necessarily deal with certain things while you're single i definitely agree with that because it brings about character you know Mm -hmm. certain things and certain um responses that you give off to an individual like for instance if they're actually um, doing something to be hurtful towards you, mm-hmm. you know, you would know how to deal with that, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, mm-hmm. versus, you know, trying to handle it when you don't have that situation being presented to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so it definitely matters. Um, it just really depends, like you said, whether you are in a relationship and dealing with it or you're, you mm-hmm. know, by yourself and dealing with it. You mm-hmm. don't really know when your assignment is or how you're mm-hmm. going to play that assignment. You don't know. You yeah. really don't know. I, I don't think, I, I don't think that it's your partner's responsibility to heal you. I don't, I don't think so either. I think that, you know, even though we carry some of that stuff into mm-hmm. um into the into the marriage or whatever, we can't say, Oh, well you you gotta fix this. This is this is me. You gotta yeah. accept me for who I am. <laughs> no, he don't. No, she don't. Gotta you we gonna work on what yeah. our marriage assignment <laughs> together. No all this is my responsibility. Whatever God assigned to us in this marriage, we go we're gonna work on that together. But your own healing, yeah. that's for you. Yeah. That's your responsibility yeah, to heal. Your that's your responsibility to work on your personal yeah. character. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, that's why I, I would have to say about that. So yeah, I, I don't think, think that goes towards your single that single mindedness because now you're trying to impose or you're trying I need your help, but no, mm-hmm. that's that's you. That's all you. <laughs> like that's that's all you. You gotta tackle that. And that's what make people don't I mean, I'm just saying, we just, if we gonna be real, we gotta keep it real. Go I mean, that's what be making people don't want to deal with people anymore mm-hmm. because of those baggages that they have and they don't handle them well. Like, they don't, they're, they're I, I will say, I don't know if it's a proper way to heal. Right. I mean, because healing is healing. However, it is that it comes about, it comes about. 
But you know what I'm saying? You can't be mad at the other person because they don't want to be with you because you have mm, that 30, baggage. 30, 30, 30. That, that hurts. Yeah, that, because you look for that. Un, you, un, you know, we look for undesired, uh, you know, unconditional love, but just saying it ain't always out there. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. And you're not always giving it. You know, you're not always being the one that's giving it as well because. For me, for instance, I was one that would definitely run. You know what I'm saying? Any little situation or any little circumstance that take place, I'm out of here. My tolerance level was like zero, none. <laughs> I had none. Let's pray for each other. Women. Okay. <laughs> women? Zero. <laughs> I'm like, I don't got time for it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sit in this. Yeah. I don't have to. I used to be like, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to sit in this. Yeah. But as I continue on in relationships, I've learned you know, how mm-hmm. to love people past mm-hmm. the issues that Correct. they have and the things that's going on within them. I can, sometimes the Lord even lets me see them, mm-hmm. see the issue that you may have and recognize that issue and still, can, you know, right. love you past mm-hmm. that. Correct. Okay. okay. I got a point I want to make too. Natasha said you got some mm-hmm. comments. <clears throat> Just one from Lakeisha. It says, don't bring that baggage into a marriage. I think it's easier said than done. I, I say, how you don't do that? How do you not bring it into the, the marriage? Um, uh, yeah, I personally, Keisha, I just think that um, it's easier said than done. But it can also go back to because at the end of the day, you just we just realize that certain things that you're not going to be able to tackle while you're single. I mean, but if it is certain things that that you notice that you can kind of, you know, what I'm saying. Uh, tackle while you're single it goes back to uh something that you have said like don't rush yourself into a marriage or into a relationship and that's what we like to do i think if we more or less take advantage of that single time Mm -hmm. that you have versus trying to hurry up and get into a doggone relationship you take advantage of that of that moment um that's what i think i was trying to lost my goddamn train of thought it was something that i had wanted to say (laughs) <laughs> what you guys were just talking about a minute ago. God damn it. Refresh my mind. Kim, what you said that you had did? What? what you, the last thing that you were just talking about. Oh, as far as me um, not having the patience to deal with. Tolerance. And being tolerance, able to look over. Yeah. yeah um, oh, no, you were saying like, um, like you were so, yeah, you was quick to leave. Um, it's some things that I just realized um, that I, uh, I've i learned now is um, I have a problem with walking away. Like, I don't know if you can have too much tempers. I don't know if that's a such thing, but um, <coughs> I have a, a issue with walking away. Mm-hmm. And you just, you, you're saying you're just not realizing that? Yeah. Is that something that's really been brought to your attention? Yeah. It's just recently been made known to me, like, uh, you know, I just had, I, you know, we like to call them come to Jesus moment, not necessarily come to Jesus moment, but, <laughs> you know, every night, because I'm that type of person where I don't like to sit in my thoughts. You know, if I can't, um, I don't like to worry about things that I can't change. I don't spend too much time sitting in my thoughts. I just let it be. But I also realize that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with some stuff either mm-hmm. in that, with that same mindset. So I was sitting in my car the other day and, um. I mean, we gotta be honest. I was just bawling. I just, I it was a couple of days. I was very, very, very emotional, and um, you know, you have a desire to cry. You have a desire to want to talk to the Lord, but the tears just won't come. The words just won't come. And um, I just turned on the song the other day, and um, it just came. And I just sat and I cried, and I didn't say too many words to the Lord, but He just began to like pour mm-hmm. into me and reveal some things about me. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about the um, the issue that you had when you you say you were you were married but you know you guys had been separated for so long and then you live singly, you know like you, for me it's some things that I have to deal with with me and it'd be hard for me to to walk away from certain things and I realize that I just need to take advantage of a walk away. Mm-hmm. That's deep. I just realized I need to take advantage of a walk away. To be honest with you. <laughs> okay, well, I do you want to touch mm-hmm. on um a little bit <coughs> about um your book. The title is Dynamic. Oh. 
very <laughs> dynamic. I love the title. It's, it's impatiently, uh, what is it? Impatiently waiting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the Don't title rush of love is what it's called. Don't rush love. And I was like, oh, that is so powerful. Talk about you. Like, it, yeah. Can you like, <laughs> what you mean impatiently waiting? Impatiently waiting. waiting. Said, I'm trying, Lord. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm it's trying, clearly, Lord. Yeah. It's common sense, but <laughs> right. Impatiently, impatiently waiting, meaning that God, like, I'm in, I'm in this position to wait on you, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm being impatient, I'm making mistakes, yet I'm gonna try to correct them, and I'm gonna try to get, get back on the right path with you, and put myself back in this position of waiting. So it just talks about how we get anxious in our wait. We get tired of waiting. We make mistakes, but our heart and our desire is to wait for what God has for us. So that was the purpose of that book. That was yeah. my positioning when I wrote that book. That book is actually, ha- over half of it is a journal. Mm-hmm. Stuff oh, okay. that I wrote after I done got my heart broke. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I feel this hurt and I'm like, God. And it was one night I was sitting in my car and God told me to uh, write about it. I didn't know it would be a book. <laughs> I didn't know it would end up being a book, right. but he just told me to. He just told me to write about it, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm like, okay, write it. I'm sitting here, I'm crying, pointing. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm <laughs> told oh. right, right now. You telling me to write about what I'm going through, right. so I just started journaling the things, and most of that was uh, formulated into this <coughs> book, which was uh, a lot of my mistakes, mm-hmm. things that I. Couldn't I found myself keep repeating, mm-hmm. um, learning my own toxic um, habits. Mm-hmm. One of them was walking mm-hmm. away, attracting the same um, type of person. Mm-hmm. You know, why would you? Why would you keep attracting the same type of person? Mm-hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with the people. You it got something to do with you. you. Yeah, that has yeah. something to do do yeah. with you. And in the, <laughs> in that book, in my testimony, I share a little bit of how, like, you know what? Until you deal with the thing that's causing you to draw draw that, you're gonna keep it. It's gonna be the same repetitive yeah. cycle. So this book is 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 wisdom from my mistakes mm-hmm. like i i messed up like anybody <clears throat> i made some mistakes yeah. and in this book is just um full of wisdom on how to avoid those things and how to um trust yourself and knowing like okay you know i know this not gonna i know that ain't gonna, <laughs> so everything in there is from an experiment standpoint from mm-hmm. let's say for instance the first half of my testimony straight up what happened the other part with the wisdom, I give scenarios, not so much my own, but the wisdom, and I just create a scenario for them with the wisdom from my experience. Yeah, gotcha. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because I, I don't believe in um, everything I do, I try to do it with balance and um, be tasteful about what I do because I don't want to write to hurt nobody else. Absolutely. Or um, every, everyone that I discuss, I, you know, I forgave them. So Absolutely. I don't want anybody to think, oh, you date yes. me, I'm going to write about you. <laughs> Like yeah. it's it like you you and I am yeah. right. It can be right. uh, like you being vengeful, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. So I write with wisdom, What's so right? that everyone's covered. You you won't know who I'm talking about. If I wrote about a scenario, you'd never know who it was, where it was. There's no evidence of that. Oh, well, that's so cute. I know, right? Look, that's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I do that. <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't know. You do it however it is that the Lord tell you to do. But definitely when I think about impatient uh, waiting is it, it kind of goes back to that um, sort of like when we when we was talking about society putting that pressure on you with the mm-hmm. age type thing or whatever type of pressures that they put yeah. on you for whatever desire it is that you have concerning the relationship. I feel like you become impatient when it is something that of course you want and you feel like you're you I'm ready now, God mm-hmm. darn it. Right. You understand you believe that the Lord has told you that you can have it. So you think it would have already come now. So now you're becoming impatient. Uh-huh. Now you're beginning to doubt, like, okay, is this come you know what I'm saying? I think more or less that's what it comes to mind for me. It's like, okay, maybe this ain't gonna happen. Now we're getting mm-hmm. we don't trust the Lord at what it is that he said. Like, if I told you that, yes, you will have this, Mm -hmm. then when it doesn't come, when we want it, then, of course, Mm -hmm. you go to getting impatient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a chapter I I have in here um, titled, Your Time Limit Kills You. Mm -hmm. You tell God, like, okay, by this time next year, 2019, my year, and then it don't happen. Now your heart, bro, you mad at God. (laughs) You God didn't tell you 2019. You you told God 2019. Mm -hmm. Your own clock is what's 
killing yeah. you. Yeah. I and this is it's go back to that whole <laughs> biological clock ticking thing that mm-hmm. everybody be referring to. You know, oh, it's time now. Oh, you this age, it's time for you to get married now. You know, so at, mm-hmm. at some point, you know, um, you have to stop <laughs> giving God the date. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Like I said earlier, you know, I had to hear him say, I do this, mm-hmm. you know, in my time, not yours. Not yours. So. Yeah, to give somebody a baby at 100 years old, like you right, think. right, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right. I ain't got to 100, you know what I'm saying? I know 90. Like, don't do me like that, girl. Yeah. And you go to think, like, okay, I, I believe you, but God, Lee, God, can you, can you adjust some things in right. that for me? That's what, at least, yeah, I don't know. But you know, I try not to think of things in that manner because I definitely was trained to, th- to, um, to operate in a certain way you know when it comes to a religious aspect so i try to fall away from certain things now and just let god uh you know mm-hmm. work for the most part um but Tosh, you know that she she back there wrapping it up oh she on that line you behind so, <laughs> so she on that line so yeah but we about to wrap it up now unless you guys have another point that you wanted to make no points, Kiana. I would I would just encourage everybody to um, let let go of your expectations. Oh, There's yes. um this older guy that told me, um, friend always giving me wisdom. He said um expect nothing, receive everything. Mm. So I believe once we let go of our expectations, our time clocks, our everything we have set in our mind, just wholeheartedly trust God that He mm. knows the best time for us. Mm. He knows the best situation for us, and we just completely trust Him. I believe we'll begin to live our best life and we'll begin to attract what's best for our life. You know, it's when we start trying to create and that's when it gets yeah, confusing. Yeah, yeah. And that's also <laughs> when our own delay comes as well. We right. delay ourselves. So just trust God. Heal as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Have as much fun as you can. Do as much as you want to do while you're single. Take your mind off of... Um, preparing your, for marriage. Yeah, preparing for marriage. Mm-hmm. It will come when it's time. What does your notebook say? God would make everything beautiful oh, yeah. in Absolutely. its time. Absolutely. And I agree with that as well, um, as far as to what she said. And then also dealing with the people who are who are married. I mean, because I'm married, <laughs> and as I stated, like uh, um, headed for a divorce. Mm-hmm. So I, and you know, what I'm saying you prepared to, be, you're already trying to prepare to be single, mm-hmm. but yet you're married. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's very important to even do mm-hmm. those things yet while you're married, because mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying it's certain. I think you just have to learn how to love you. So mm-hmm. that way, when you're single, because what we do is we carry a lot of those things with us once we're we're separated. You know what I'm saying? Like we hold ourselves, right. we're hard on ourselves once right. you're back in that single moment. So if you stay focused on you and you know what I'm saying, what it is that you feel like you need to do for you, and I mean, well, I'm a spiritual person. As far as to what you need to tackle with the Lord, you'll tackle those things, and you can still remain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A whole, even while you're married, and yet. And your singleness. Mm-hmm. You have yeah, some points, Kiana? Yeah, I absolutely agree um, with both of you ladies. And um, like I said, I'm single, so I can only come from you know a single standpoint. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely like what you guys were saying as far as taking those things, um, taking your your time in in trying to take care of self first. Mm-hmm. You know, um, before you even try to focus on preparing for marriage you know um you can always focus on that at a later time but make sure that you are taking care of yourself Mm -hmm. and then you know head into a marriage but take care of the spiritual things Mm -hmm. that needs to be taken care of take care of the mindset all of the baggage that you have from previous relationships all of that take care of that first if possible because it's not always going to be possible to do (laughs) Because you might have to, that assignment might be <laughs> when you get in that marriage. <laughs> so, you know, at the same time, you might you need to know that mm-hmm. you might have to do that in the marriage as well. So, I don't know. Um, that's my thoughts as far as being single. And just for the couples, before I go, the, the married couples, uh, understand that your partner is your, is, should be your friend. When you get into a marriage, you start thinking that your partner is your enemy. But you need to have the mindset. We skip the friendship. We take friendship out of everything. And your partner should be your friend before they're anything. Because you don't just give trust. Your friend has such a high standard as far as trust. You confide in your friend. You trust your friend has the best um, best has your best interest at heart. You should see your spouse that same way. Stop skipping the friendship. 
stop taking the friendship part out of your marriage because that's what's going to keep your marriage together. If you have in mind that this person is my friend, this person is not against me, this person has my back, this person is not going to betray me. Once that friendship is gone out the marriage, the the marriage is pretty much, what is it? <laughs> Without the friendship. Because everything in a friendship is everything you're going to need for marriage. That's it. Okay. We have one final comment from <laughs> Tanitra Blake. Hi, Tanitra. <laughs> Stop letting social media dictate yes. when you need to get married. Those proposals are beautiful to watch that we constantly see. But being married and staying true to vows is work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoy your topic today, Aww. beautiful ladies. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Share, share, share. Where can you follow us? Absolutely. Uh, don't forget to follow us. Of course, you guys are on the business spoken with purpose page. We have a second page where you guys can kind of communicate with you guys better, and that's called spoken. The W like a middle name, and then we have uh, purpose. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. That is spoken with purpose. The number three. That's all together, and then the number three. We're also on YouTube. You can go to Spoken With Purpose Podcast. And then when it comes to the apps uh, that you guys can download and listen to the um, the live episodes, those are on Anchor. We're on Apple Podcasts. I mean, we have everyone on Spotify. Anything that you could think of, we out there. So y'all make sure that you guys tune in. And thank you guys again for tuning in tonight for your comments and everything. I'm going to let Shamika tell a little bit about her conference before we head out. And then we go. <laughs> okay, great. You guys can follow me at Shamika McNair on all platforms. And for my sing- the single assignment event that's coming up where we can discuss topics like this openly, judgment-free, um, will be January the 11th, 2020 at Hub 925 Sand Lake Road. Yeah. Um, you can go to Eventbrite at Up for Discussion. That's up4discussion.eventbrite.com. And when can, where can they purchase your book? All of my yeah. books are available on Amazon.com. Impatiently waiting. <laughs> or my website, Shamika L. McNair. <laughs> All right, and thanks again, Shamika. Thank for you, Mom. Thank you, ladies, really so much. Really enjoyed yes. you. I'm like, you right. need to pray for me. <laughs> right. You need to pray for <laughs> 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 Y'all already know we about to tune out of here, so we about to hit y'all with that with that music. I, I, I hear from my phone, I guess. <laughs> Before you judge the surface, look at my eyes and read between my eyes. They know the time you keep yawning and holding action, no bragging, no boasting, facts with no cap, and they hold it down. Envision me words and use them as power, the enemy lurking. I'm calling my spirit, and if it can hear me, it's spoken with purpose.